رادیو شور با رادیو What is the matter, Johnny? You are washing the donut. It is not clean? Huh? Oh, oh no, no, Nick. I was just thinking about something, that's all. Oh, love, maybe? You know, I was in love once with a debut tramp. She was... Oh, no, no, it, it's not that, Nick. Oh, I know. The rodeo this afternoon. You are going to win, yes? <laughs> oh, me? No, no. <laughs> what is the matter? You are the best rider in the college. No, I wasn't thinking about the rodeo. It was something Professor Cooper said in class this morning. Something about the fourth dimension. Fourth dimension? Yeah. That is any relativity to the fifth column? Oh, no, Nick. It has to do with, uh, with time and, and space and... and uh, look, Johnny, don't tell me nothing about time and space. You know, once I buy a couple of lots, they give me plenty space, but no time to pay. <laughs> no, no, Nick, you don't understand. It has to do with life about life being as permanent as all eternity. Now, for example, Nick, the life that's in you always has been and always will be. Is that so? Yeah. Professor Cooper said it was merely a consciousness that shackles us to the present. Now, if we could escape through our subconscious, we might be able to go back into the past. Sixty, eighty, a hundred years or more, Nick. Johnny, I think you need bromo cells. <laughs> no, I'm all right. It's just that I can't figure it out. Golly. Imagine being able to go back into the past. Me? I don't mind go back 10 or 15 years to get $1,000 for a fight again. Say, that's right, Nick. You were a prize fighter. Sure. Now look, if I were to sock you in the jaw and knock you cold, you might go back into the past. No, Johnny. No, I get knocked out twice, but I never go back into the past. I go back into the dressing room and stretch. <laughs> well, anyway, Nick, that's what they call the fourth dimension. Well, Johnny, it is too deep for me, unless it is like the chicken in my fridge is easy. Huh? I don't get it. Neither does the customer. <laughs> well, here's a definition you can remember, Nick. X minus the square root of Y over zero equals infinity. Is that clear? Johnny, I think I got brains, but you are colossal. <laughs> hey, hey, what time is it? Oh, gosh, gee whiz, I gotta get to the rodeo. Gonna ride in the grand entry. Gotta sing with the glee club. So long, Nick. Y equals the X of the roots of my affinity. That is why I get crazy when I get tic-tac-toe. Oh, hey. This is going to be one of the wildest get-togethers the West has ever seen. Boys, say, let's have some fun, eh? Say that, Ra Ra. Did you bring the teacher a nice big red apple? You make believe cowboys think you're pretty good, don't you? <laughs> what do you mean, make believe? Just that. You put on a pair of boots and a 10-gallon hat and make believe you're a cowboy. Say, I was born and raised in Arizona, if that means anything to you. Well, you don't say so. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. My father was a riding, a shooting, a fighting, a cowboy that ever threw a leg across the saddle. Well, I claim all those honors for my dad. Well, you go right on claiming. Well, I said still goes. Say, perhaps you never heard of Dusty King. No, I never. 
Who? Dusty King? You mean the range buster? I certainly do. Well, and that was your dad? That's what my birth certificate says. Shake. Well, <laughs> say, did your dad ever mention Crash Corrigan? Crash Corrigan? Crash Corrigan? Yeah. Well, I'll say he hasn't plenty, too. Why? Well, he was talking about my dad. Uh, well, I'll be. <laughs> Put her there. Ah, those were the good old days when the range busters rode. Crash, Dusty, and Alibi. An old Alibi and his wooden pal Elmer. Things are mighty tame nowadays compared to what they were then. Yeah, I guess we were just born too late in life, huh? Yeah. Unless perhaps we could go back like, uh, like Professor Cooper said. Go back, Cooper? What are you talking about? Oh, oh, nothing. Just a crazy idea about present, past, and fourth dimension. Ladies and gentlemen, the first event on our program is the calf roping contest. <laughs> John King, representing the university, is wearing the number 180. He's making his mount down here in shoot three. All set, John? Well, let her go! Ride him, Johnny. Ride him, Johnny! How about it, kid? Are you hurt badly? Time. Space. Fourth dimension. You can go back. Into the past. Back. Gee, you had me worried there for a while. Oh. Thanks, Crash. You better hurry back and report to the chief. Gee, what happened to those... Outlaws plug me? <laughs> no, your horse, Dumb, you just lit on your head. Oh, is that all? Yeah. Well, they won't be coming back for a spell. One of you might have been killed trying to save Father and me. <laughs> well, I only hope we got here in time to keep those road agents from getting anything. Apparently, they weren't trying to get anything. No, they just pulled guns on us and ordered us to go back. They said they didn't want any newcomers in Cactus City. I think their real motive was to keep me from holding court in this district. Well, it's about time I introduced myself. I'm Judge Uriah Jones, ordered by the Department of Justice to hold trials in this territory. And, uh, my daughter, Dorothy. Uh, pleased to meet you, ma'am. do? My name's Turhoon, most referred to as Alibi. And these two mavericks are Crash Corrigan, Dusty King. Well, howdy, ma'am. Howdy, Judge. <coughs> How do you do, gentlemen? Well, Dorothy, we'd better be on our way. I think so, too, Father. Oh, I have a notion I ought to see you and your father safe in the town. Hey, but uh, Crash. Aren't you forgetting about your date with the lady at the ranch, who's in a heap of trouble? 
That lady happens to be Mother Rogers, and you know it. Why, then you must go to her at once. That's right, oh, Frank. Then I can meet you an alibi at the ranch later. Come along, Miss Jones. Judge. Goodbye. When you come to Cactus City, we'll stop in and see us. Maybe I will. Goodbye. Come on, we're wasting time. So you let him get away with it. I could have done better myself. I came here with a fair and square proposition, Mother Rogers. There's no reason for you to act this way. I'm acting to protect my property. I told you to keep away from here, Mr. Gallup. I'm not selling. But all the railroad wants is a right-of-way, and willing to pay good money for it, too. That's not what I heard. You've been cheating folks out of their land right and left. All right. But that railroad's going through. You're not going to stop progress. Progress? Cheating people? Stealing my cow hands from me and making loafers out of them? Drinking and gambling around Cactus City, if you call that progress? Now get out of here. Alibi? There she is now. Boy, oh boy, she'll sure be glad to see us. Let's go. Better stop where you are. Turn around and get off my property or I shoot. Warm welcome is right. Say, I reckon she doesn't recognize us. We better ride in closer. Hey, Mother Rogers, don't you know me? Say, I'm Crash Corrigan. Mother! Did you say Crash? Crash Corrigan? That's right, Mother. Well, what are you waiting for, you old heartbreaker, you? That kind of stuff, Mother. <laughs> oh, Mother. Oh, you have Oh, gee, I'm sure glad to see you. Stand back and let me take a look at you. My, but you filled out since the last time I saw you. You must be eating regular. Eating? Not today, Mother. Oh, why didn't you say so? You're just in time for supper. Hear that, Alibi? Food. We can start eating regular again. Where's your manners, Elmer? She only invited Crash. Well, ain't no log in hinting, is there? I'll swan a talking totem pole. That's an insult. Friend of yours, Crash? Oh, excuse me, Mother. The little fellow's nursemaid is Alibi Terry. And Alibi meet Mother Rogers. Pleased to know you, Mrs. Rogers. Now, don't get high-toned on me, young man. I'm Mother Rogers to you, just the same as to everybody else. Now, come on in and eat. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Just like getting money from home. Whoopee! It's been right pleasant having somebody to talk to. It's been kind of lonesome around here since the boys left. Well, what I can't make out, Mother, is how a bunch of ranch hands that work for someone like you could run out and take a railroad job. Well, you mustn't be too hard on the boys. That man Gallup that I've been telling you about, he made things sound mighty attractive. With more wages than I can afford to pay, too. Wages and money? <laughs> money isn't everything. <laughs> no, but it comes in handy once in a while. But with the carousing and gambling at Gallup's Hotel, the boys will owe more at the end of the month than they've earned. Then that settles it. We're fetching them back even if we have to hog tie every last one of them. No, please. I wouldn't want them back that way. You could use them, couldn't you? use them. I'm not ruined without them. Crash will tell you, this used to be the best spread in the basin. But now it's getting to be just a tumble-down ranch in Arizona. But the only way I want them back is the way they left, of their own free will and accord. And believe me, Mother, that's the way they're coming back. 
No, Crash, you're just heading into a lot of trouble. <laughs> you just keep your chin up, Mother. We don't like trouble, and there isn't going to be any. Good evening, Judge. Well, good evening, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm delighted to see you again, and in more peaceful surroundings. Yeah, if we can believe our own eyesight. On the surface, things do look rather peaceful. Say, you don't have any notion where we might find that straight partner of ours. Oh, you mean Mr. King? Yeah. Well, he very kindly volunteered to look after my daughter while I waited here to meet the sheriff. I couldn't say just where they've disappeared to. Dusty always did make himself handy that way, keeping the ladies from being too lonesome. Well, he shouldn't be detained much longer. Well, Mr. Gallup assured me he'd find the sheriff very shortly. Did you say Mr. Gallup? Yes. He's the proprietor of this hotel and has been most cooperative. I'm beginning to feel that Cactus City is a pretty decent community after all. Very soon we'll roll along down the trail And sing our song with love and love We'll send the sagebrush or roam the hat my tumble down ranch in Arizona when we ride. We'll sing a tune, we'll have the stars, we'll have the moon, and pretty soon we'll turn around that corner to my tumble down ranch in Arizona. Mm -hmm. And we'll ride for a change on a buck and cayuse in the open range. Get going the hills, come into view, the plains are old, but life is new, so hurry down the trail that's calling you, to my tumble down ranch back. Pretty singing, Dusty. Just as pretty as when you sang that song to that little senorita down Sonora way. And they looked at her just like that, too. Yeah. I was just talking to your father, ma'am, and he was afraid to be imposing on Dusty. So I said I'd be pleased to relieve him for a while. Patio looks right pretty out in the moonlight. Shall we? Well, I'll be seeing you. Hey, just you wait a minute, Grace. I promised the judge that I'd fetch Miss Jones back to him. Well, uh, suppose you both fetch me. Well, all right. I reckon I know one ain't needed around here. Well, you got a lot more sense than Craig. Why, certainly. That document you have serves also as a letter of introduction. An introduction for Uriah Jones, provided you are Uriah Jones. Oh, but never mind. Merely a technicality. We'll have it straightened out in a few days. And that important looking dude there is Gallup? Yeah. He gave the judge a glad hand as soon as we arrived. Look, the two men who held us up this afternoon. Are you sure? Positive. I'm sure, Judge, the sheriff has no idea of interfering with you. He only Father, wants to... look, there they are, over by the card table. The two desperados, Sheriff. The one that stopped us this afternoon. Place them under arrest. <coughs> what are you charging them with? Attempted intimidation with deadly weapons. All right, go ahead. Hey, Mason, Reagan, have you boys ever seen this gentleman before? I never did. How about you, Tombstone? He charges you pulled guns on him. Out on the road this afternoon. Who, me? Certainly you. You and this man. I'm sorry to disappoint you, stranger, but me and Tombstone hadn't been outside of that bar all day. Sheriff, I insist that I can identify these two men as our assailants, positively, and so can my daughter. I demand that they be held for trial. <coughs> oh, all right, Judge. We'll try, try him here or now. Here the floor, everybody. Tote out 12 chairs for the jury. The court's about to go into session. You heard 
heard the evidence, gentlemen of the jury, given under oath. Summed up, stands like this. Judge Jones and his uh, daughter over here testify that the defendants, Cliff Mason, Tombstone Reagan, stopped them at point of gun and used threatening language. <coughs> now, on the other hand, the said defendants, Reagan and Mason, maintain under oath they could not have been the guilty parties and offer as an alibi the fact that they were under the roof of this building since 11 o'clock this morning. And specifically, in that portion of the building, designated as the bar room. Their testimony to this effect is supported by Pete Jackson, who as barkeeper should know who was and who wasn't in the bar room. It seems to simmer down to this vital question. Who would be most likely by the defendants? Pete, who has known them all his life, or the witnesses for the prosecution, who admittedly have never seen them before today. That's what you've got to decide among yourselves, gentlemen. So get your heads together and think out a verdict. Take it easy, Judge. Right now the cards are stacked against you. Not guilty. Not guilty. Not guilty. Men, the verdict of the jury is not guilty. The defendants are dismissed. Court is adjourned. And uh, the refreshments are on me. <laughs> Never mind, Father. Judge, you'd better move out of this hotel. Why? What do you mean? I regret this whole incident very much, Judge. I only wish... Sure, I... sure, the judge knows you do. That's why you'd better check him and his daughter out of your hotel. But uh, what's the matter? Haven't you been comfortable here? Oh, it isn't that. It's on account of their health. They need to get out of town. Well, if it's only a question of health, Judge, I can... The judge you. doesn't expect that you'd put poison in these food. But it'd be a lot healthier for them out at Mother Roger's place. Very well. I'll send word to stay. We'll have the team hitched up at once. Now, don't you worry. Mother Rogers will be tickled to death to have some boarders like you. Well, I suppose you know best. And besides, it'd be coming at a time when that board money'd come in right handy. Well, she won't only get that. But if the situation is as bad as you say it is, I may be able to contribute some legal advice. She'll be able to use a plan of that. We'll see you both later, then? Well, not much later, I hope. And tell Mother Rogers we'll be along just as soon as we get her black sheep in tow. All right. Goodbye. 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 Hey, say, maybe I better take a look outside. You better look around in the bar. I'll stick around here for a while. All right. Looks like I'll need another stack. Well, here, make out an IOU. Say, you're Shorty Gill, aren't you? Yeah, leastwise, that's what Lamar said. Well, then you haven't got time to write out any IOUs? Who says so? Me. Likely you don't remember that scrawny kid that you taught to throw a cinch under a horse's belly. Huh? Well, I'm that kid, only I'm filled out some. Why, you're the one that dubbed me Crash. Crash? Crash? Crash Corrigan? Right. Well! Oh, Shorty. Gee, I'm glad to see you. I need you to help me round up the rest of those strays that broke out of Mother Rogers' corral. You bet I will. Let's go. Hey, you. I stood all the interfering I'm going to from you. Get out of here and leave my men alone. I'll get out of here, all right, but I'll take a parcel of Mother Rogers' cow hands along with me. You think you are. All right, give him a real cactus city welcome.
okay, Dusty? Yeah. Nice reception. You won't be needing me now. The judge and Dorothy are waiting. Yeah, go ahead, Alibi. See you out to Mother Roger. So long, partner. If there was ever a bunch of sheep killing dogs, it's us. Being fed and kept and bailed out of jail by the finest woman that ever lived. And then deserting her the first chance we get. Now listen, we're going to round up the rest of the boys and we're heading back to the ranch. We're going to show Mother Roger that we're still with her. Now you're talking, Shorty. <laughs> Will we see you out there, Crash? Ah, pronto. Come on. Oh, yeah. Say, uh, thanks, Gallup, for the Cactus City welcome. Yeah, thanks a lot. Why, little Slocum, when did you get in town? Just in time to see that you've had a little ruckus here. Yeah, I did have a run with a couple smart Alex, but you don't have to worry about that. I'm worrying plenty. And so would you before I'm through. Let's go into your office where we can talk. Well, sure, anything you say. Sit down. All right, thanks. What's the matter? Aren't things going all right? Of course they're not. The railroad's getting fidgety. As long as I get right of ways and deliver them on time, they're not going to ask any questions. I pay what I want and collect the full price from them. That's why I made my deal with you. You gave me to understand you could handle things the way you wanted around here. I can. Haven't I brought most of the ranchers to terms already? And the price is as low as you expected? But the railroad's not interested in laying its tracks across most of the ranches. It has to have a straightaway. I'll get it. When? Just as soon as I whip old Lady Rogers into line. After that, the rest will come around easy. You and old Lady Rogers have put me out on a limb. First thing I know, the railroad will chop it off. Wait a minute. Where are you going? Stow away my luggage in one of your rooms. And tomorrow I'll go out and see old Lady Rogers myself. I'll show you how to handle things around here. Oh, I know how you feel about the railroad, Mrs. Rogers. But even railroad men must eat. Mm, I don't know why. <laughs> well, those men are hard workers and are hearty eaters. That's good business for me. You say you're a cattle jobber? Yes, a jobber and wholesale butcher. I dress the meat for the railroad cooks. Well, I guess meat don't care who eats it, and your price seems right, too. Over market price, Mrs. Rogers. You see, they've taken on so many men that they need beef badly. All right, I'll sell you 30 head. Never could see men starve, even if they are working for the wrong outfit. I'll just take this indelible pencil and sign it here. Oh, no, in triplicate. One for you, one for me, and one for the railroad. Railroad? Why, yes, Mrs. Rogers, just custom. The railroad likes to know where its beef comes from, so it won't buy rustled cattle. Hmm. Mighty generous of the railroad. <laughs> where did you say to sign? Right here. Hmm. And now, once again. That's it. Well, I'll send you yours as soon as it's signed by the company. And oh. Here you are, Mrs. Rogers. Two hundred dollars on account. Made out to me, too. Mighty sure of yourself, aren't you? Well, I've heard of your generous nature, Mrs. Rogers. <laughs> well, goodbye. As soon as you round up the cattle, I'll take delivery. My boys will have them in the corral not later than tomorrow. Well, that's fine. Early in the morn, can't you see the sun come shining? With it comes a silver lining, break up with the dawn. On the windowsill, there's a robin harmonizing. Yes, sirree, it's time for rising, break up with the dawn. Wake up, wake up, it's a wonderful day. Here's the coffee percolating, early birds bring home the bacon, wake up with the dawn, wake up, wake up, wake up with the dawn.
Hey, it's about time you fellows got busy. You know, there's a lot of work to make up. Shorty, you and your boys take care of the herding down in the gully. All right, Crash. You boys mount up and go pick up those trays on the south bench. And Dusty, I reckon you'd better go along with Shorty. Oh, but Crash, I, uh, I was thinking maybe I, I better get back to the ranch house. Mm-hmm. Well, I just thought I might be of some help to Mother Rogers. Sure. That's right thoughtful of you. In fact, uh, I appreciate it. But Mother Rogers' name doesn't happen to be Dorothy. Oh, well, uh, say, I'm glad I'm not as suspicious as some people are. I just thought I might be of some help. Why, of course you were. But Alibi's taking care of everything at the ranch house, so you'd better go along with the boys. Oh, all right. Oh, uh, you coming along? Oh, no. I've got to, uh... Uh, check on some fences on the North Range. Oh. Oh, I see. The fence's name doesn't happen to be Dorothy by any chance. Oh, now, Dusty, what was that you said about people being suspicious? Oh, Dusty, come on, let's go. What do you think, Alibi? Look, $200. You and the boys and the new boarders sure brought me good luck. $200 is good luck in any lingo. Where'd you get it? Well, that man that was here a while ago, did you see him? Sure, I saw him. But he wasn't our idea of Santa Claus. Well, he's a big cattle buyer, furnishing beef to the railroad, and that's the down payment on 30 head of cattle. Signs it's Slocum. Well, that's his name. Mm. What's the matter, Alibi? Ain't any good? Yep, maybe. But down Tucson way, we never heard of a big cattle buyer called Slocum. But if he isn't what he said, what did he want 30 head to give me that check? Oh, I reckon it's as good as it looks. What do you know about it, Alibi? Now, Mother, if I was you, I'd take it to the bank and get it cash for it, I didn't have any cattle. I sure will. Well... I told you I could handle little Lady Rogers. Take a look at that. Why, this is only a bill of sale for 30 head of cattle. And that's what Mother Rogers thought when she signed it. Look underneath. A right of way release? Huh. They've got to have brains to outsmart Dan Slocum. Pretty clever. You put one over on me, all right. Mm hmm But how about the other right-of-ways I lined up? Well, what about them? I'll get my figures. paid the ranchers, uh -huh. and there's what you collect from the railroad, mm -hmm. and there's my share of the takeoff. Hmm. Well, it seems like good addition and subtraction. Then it's about time I saw the color of some of the money. Well, there's lots of time for that after the whole job's wound up. It just dawned on me that you've been playing me for a sucker. I do the work, put a small force in your pockets, and then you tell me to go jump in the lake. Well, I don't see why you say that. We made an agreement, didn't we? But an agreement on which nobody could sue. That's why I like to begin collecting as we go along. Meaning you'll run out on the job if you don't? Well, I might. Well, that suits me. That's exactly what I expected you to say. You think you have me over a barrel. But you're mistaken, Mr. Slocum, because I have a little piece of paper that I can come right out in the open with and shove right down your throat. What's the matter with you? Have you gone a little loco? Oh, no, it's you that's gone loco when you didn't destroy that bill of sale for 30 head of cattle. Very careless of you, Mr. Slocum. So I decided I'd better take charge of it. Why, well, you double-crossing! Hand it over. Got too much brains for that. And besides, it's locked in the safe. That little piece of paper would make mighty interesting reading, wouldn't it? In a court of law. How about this money that's due you? 
Just as soon as I can arrange my finances in Kansas City, I'll pay you. Fine. Then I'll give you your bill of sale. That's a bargain. No hard feelings. Of course not. Thank you, Mr. King, for saddling my horse. Well, that was nothing, Miss Dorothy. I'm always glad to be of service, especially to you. <coughs> <coughs> Going for a ride, Miss Dorothy? Uh, yes. On that horse? Why, yes. Is anything the matter? Well, uh, the stirrups are too short. I'd better help you. Hey, wait a minute. There's nothing around here now that needs fixing but you. Well, but those stirrups are too short. Well, maybe for your long legs, but not for Miss Dorothy's. Oh, so you're a... Uh, Pretty good judge of uh, distance, aren't you? Well, uh, just as good as you are. Well, maybe so. Maybe so. Well, well, well. Seems like the bees always do buzz around the honeysuckle. Oh, Mr. Alibi, are you going to town? Yes, I'm going into the post office for your father. He's expecting an important letter from Washington. Oh, yes. Well, then I'm out a short way with you. Well, so long, boys. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> and he talks about the bees buzzing around the honey. Dog gone. <laughs> line a little more to the left. The tracks will have to be laid out between those hills over there. Here, see for yourself. Well, Judge, the hens are keeping up with the boys' appetites. <laughs> What's the matter, Shorty? There's a bunch of strange men on the North Range. They're surveying our land. What? Well, we'll soon see about that. Get Dusty and Crash here right away and hitch up the wagon. You bet. It must be some mistake. It's going to be a mistake for them, all right. I think I'd better go with you. with you. Is there anything wrong, ma'am? Don't ma'am me. Get off my land. Your land? Are you Mrs. Rogers? Certainly I'm Mrs. Rogers. And this is my North Range. And what's more... Just a I... minute, Mrs. Rogers. We're railroad surveyors laying out the right of way. You sold us. I sold you nothing. Well, you must be mistaken, Mrs. Rogers, because here it is, signed, sealed, and paid for. May I see it? Looks legal and binding every word of it. Is that your signature? Why, yes, I... I... And the $200, did you get it? Why, the swindling, thieving pack of coyotes. I sold them cattle, that's what I sold them. I signed a bill of sale. This looks like you've signed a right-of-way release. They've tricked me. Now you get out of here right now and tell that slocum man I'll shoot on sight. You heard her, fella. Now get out. Take it easy, boys. There's a mistake somewhere. Oh, no, Judge. If Mother Rogers says she was tricked, that's good enough for us. All right. But first, I must ask you for that paper.
Come here, fellas. I want to speak to you. What's going on here? Mrs. Rogers ordered us off. She says this is her land. I'm the law around here. I'll see that you're not interfered with. Come on. This land belongs to the railroad. Dan Slocum sent me to see that the work goes on. Oh, he did, did he? Well, by jumping G. Hossafat. Just a uh, minute. Shooting won't help. This thing can be settled legally. I hope you folks realize there's no further use questioning in the law. All right, you fellas, go ahead with your work. Hey, are we going to be hogtied like that? Dusty? I got a right smart idea. Take it easy. Oh, Mother? Yeah? Say, uh, could we borrow the uh, wagon for a little while? Uh, Judge, uh, suppose we stretch our legs a little bit. Hey, uh, oh, yes, to be sure. Here's your letter, Judge. Oh, thanks, Alibi. This letter is just what I've been waiting for. Now, if you'll only be patient, I think we can clear up this bad business around here. That's just fine, Judge. Now, you got it all straight? You betcha. <laughs> The equipment is burning. We're gonna find things without our yeah, I knew I should have run an Well, Sheriff, looks like we can't do any more work today. <coughs> yes, we can't say that equipment is all burned up now. <coughs> well, Mr. Gallup, the surveying crew is working on Mother Rogers' land right now. So you might just as well keep that little piece of paper. That's just what I intend doing, Mr. Slocum. Come in. Mother Rogers is on the warpath again. She had a runaway wagon wrecked with surveying instruments. She did? After signing the release to the railroad? Yes, sir. And what's more, she insists the paper she signed was a release for cattle. Why, that's ridiculous. She's already received payment for the right of way and has cast a check. Come on, we're going to have it out. Uh, maybe you better not. She promised to shoot you on sight, and I have a notion that she really would. Why, that's a felony. <laughs> Criminy? You're right. And the display of firearms aggravates the offense. Then what are you waiting for? Why don't you arrest her right away? All right, I will. <clears throat> uh, first thing in the morning. In the meantime, I'll tell the surveyors to get new instruments and continue with the survey tomorrow. Might as well wait here. If I need any help, I'll yell. All right, sir. Anybody home? Yes, right here. Is Mrs. Rogers in? Why do you want to see her? Official business. And uh, in the name of the law. All right, I'll get her.
are you fellas doing here? But at present, we're acting as deputies. And where's the sheriff? Inside the house. Because my painful duty, Mrs. Rogers, as custodian of the law, <coughs> duly appointed. Well, out with it, you big bag of wind. What do you want? Bag of wind, am I? <coughs> oh, 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 maybe this will make you change your mind. What's it for? It's a warrant for your arrest on three specific charges. Illegal dispossession, coercion, and threatened homicide. Well, let me get my hat and coat. All right, go ahead. Please, Dusty. Everything is going to be all right. What do you mean, all right? My father will know how to handle this. With the information he received from Washington yesterday, neither the sheriff, nor Slocum, nor any of the others can prevent him from carrying out the law. To this complaint, Mrs. Rogers. I am forced to hold you temporarily. Meanwhile, arrangements will be made to release you on bail. But I object, Your Honor. Objection overruled. Every citizen in this jurisdiction is entitled to bail. But if you let her out on bail now, she'll run my men off the right of way again. You're doggone right, I will. There you are, Your Honor, upon her own admission. The defendant will have no opportunity to drive anyone off the right of way because no one will be on the right of way. What do you mean? There seems to be some question as to the methods employed to obtain possession of the right of way. Consequently, I'm issuing an injunction against further work on it until title is established, one way or the other. But I object, Your Honor. That's not fair to the railroad. Fair? What do you know about being fair, you swindle, you? <laughs> Judge, I demand you exercise your authority. She's in contempt of court. Contempt? Phew! I've got plenty of contempt for you. Boys, that letter I received from Washington informed me that several other ranchers had had the same experience with Gallup and Slocum that Mother Rogers had. It also implicates Sheriff Nye. Oh, he was just carrying out orders. He practically admitted as much. Yeah, but what can anybody do about it when he's the law around here? He was the law. I have the authority now to take charge. Gosh. Well, that's what Dorothy meant. Say, you going to take over right away? Before I do that, I'd like to have direct evidence of their fraud. Then, I could put them all behind bars. Well, just what evidence do you need? I think that bill of sale that Mother Rogers signed would be sufficient. Well, Slocum got Mother to sign it. He ought to have it. Maybe not. If Slocum was in cahoots with Gallup, uh, either one of them might have it. I think I got a pretty good notion where it might be. Well, what are we waiting for? One moment, boys. Let's do this thing legally. Alibi. Get the good book. And by the authority vested in me, I'll swear you all in as Deputy United States Marshal. I've come for that bill of sale. Don't try to frighten me. You wouldn't pull that kind of rough stuff. Get that idea out of your head. Come on, pile out of bed. We're going down to your office. Dusty, tie the horses off behind the barn, then mosey over to the hotel. Right. Alibi? You still got your knife? Sure. I want to see how good you are at jimming a window.
Oh, so it was you I heard. Well, I thought maybe that... Hey, how did it happen? I don't know. I found him like that when I came in through the window. All right, you birds. Start reaching for the rafters. You're both under arrest for unlawful entry. <gasps> Murder. Don't you move. Listen, Sheriff, if you think we had anything to do with this, you're wrong. Galp was lying there just like that when we came in. Hold up! I know when I've caught someone red-handed. Now get moving. I tell you, Sheriff, we didn't have anything to do with it. Now let us at least do some searching. You give you birds a chance to make a break? No, sorry. I've done all the searching I need. Now get moving. Come on! Don't forget I'm right behind you. Don't do that. As soon as that flame touches the paper, I'll shoot. Keep your hands up a little higher and keep them out of mischief. Better hold them a little higher so I can see them better. Get off that chair. All right. I quit. You've got me. You birds would butt in at the wrong time. Another minute and I'd have had him rolled out like a carpet. <laughs> oh, you're just in time, Sheriff. Here's your murderer. <clears throat> yeah, fine work, boys. I was just about to arrest him myself. Ah, not so fast, Sheriff. You're under arrest, too. Oh, uh, uh, <clears throat> what do you mean? Why, by what authority? There's my authority. <coughs> <coughs> You know, Mother, I have a notion you'd better store this napkin away from me. I'm likely to use it again sometime within the next ten years. <laughs> Mine, too. Only I hope it's a lot sooner than ten years. It don't seem good matters to eat and rum, but we was figuring on making Apache Butte before night sets in. Well, all I can say is we're going to be mighty sorry to see you boys leave us. God bless you. <laughs> Both of you. And you, too, Alibi. We've got a lot to thank you for. Cactus City is a new place on account of you boys. Lawful, orderly, and the railroad's coming in over right of ways. <laughs> oh, shucks, Judge. You'd have found a way to do all that without our help. I don't know about that. Father never learned to jimmy windows. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to miss you awfully. And we're going to do some missing ourselves. Well, all I hope is that we find you here when we come back. And so do I. And that it won't be too long. Gosh, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all get together years and years from now and... When the West is all built up and there are railroads and uh, schools and cities. Gosh, I don't understand. I, I feel kind of dizzy. I believe he's coming, too. Johnny. How do you feel? Well, I'm all right. Hey, where am I? Why, this is the University Infirmary. <laughs> Good old crash. I might have known you'd be here. Where's Alibi? Alibi? Yeah. <laughs> well, what are you talking about? <laughs> Say, isn't your name Dorothy Jones? <laughs> oh, I know. But that was my mother's maiden name. And your father, Judge Uriah Jones? No, but... Well, that was my grandfather. And Mother Rogers and Alibi and Elmer. By golly, I must have went off in the fourth dimension or something. Either that or I've been dreaming. <laughs> you sure were a dreaming. <laughs> what? Well, I almost forgot something. Hey, kid! Kid, he's all right now. Come on, ranching. Hey.
Dios, 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 Dios,